In this video, I'm going to show you how to provision your ESP32 device over BLE using the Arduino library as a component so that you can use the Arduino syntax that you're already familiar with. Now, this is impossible to do out of the box with the Arduino IDE. You have to do some serious hacks to even possibly make it work, and it's also non-trivial in platform I.O. So in order to support this, we at Deploy the Fleet have created an example project that we've open sourced so that anybody can get up and started in just a few minutes as you will see in this video. So for this example, I'm going to be using a US, uh, USB uh, ESP32 dev kit. This is the Pico dev kit M2. And let's talk about prerequisites. First of all, this video is for Windows, Mac. It will work on Linux, although we've made a separate video specific to Linux using Docker that will save you some time if you're using that platform. And uh, so the prerequisites for this are to have VS Code installed along with the Espressive extension. I will give you a link to the repo in the description for this video that you'll also want to clone ahead of time. That is, it might take a little bit of time because it does pull down the Arduino ESP32 library, which is a rather large repo that's a dependency of the project. So let's just jump right in and I'll show you how this works. So I'm in VS Code here. Again, the prerequisite for this is to have the Espressive IDF extension installed, as you can see I do here. And then I already have the project open. So we can take a look at the code here. So first of all, the comp under the components folder, we have Arduino. This is what gives us our Arduino style for coding. It's a it's the official Arduino 32 uh, ESP32 component, and it is just added as a submodule to the repository. You can ignore this. I just want to point it out so that you know what is going on under the covers. <clears throat> okay, and then we have a main folder here with a main.cpp, and not a lot here, less than 100 lines of code. And what you'll see is we have this sysprov event. You can mostly ignore this, but if you're interested, you can look through it. These are all the events that the provisioning service will fire that you can get feedback on what's happening in different parts of the process. And then this will look familiar. If you're familiar with Arduino, we have a setup and loop. So just like you're familiar with. And in the setup, all we're gonna do is this uh, serial begin, very familiar. This Wi-Fi on event is what wires up the callback that I just pointed out above. And then here is the magic, Wi-Fi prov dot begin provision. And the first three arguments, you're not gonna wanna change. This Wi-Fi prov scheme BLE is what makes us use BLE for provisioning and some other settings here. The last two, however, you're free to change. The first one um, here is the proof of possession pin, which we'll use later on. I will show you that in the app as well as the service name. And this is how your device will show up in the app when you're trying to provision it. So you can feel free to change those, but you may need to make some changes to the process, which I'll show you here in a minute in the application. Now in our loop, we're gonna have, I have this is provisioned, which way at the top here, I set to false. And so if it is provisioned and it has credentials, this is where your normal Arduino loop code would go. Reading sensors, uh, looking at actuators, uh, controlling actuators. And then I have an else here. This is something that you would do while it's waiting to be provisioned. Your device is up and running and going through the loop. You maybe want to set an LED to a specific color or flash it. Or if you have a display attached to your device, you could put something on there like open the app to get started. This code will run until you have credentials provisioned on your device. And so um, where is is provisioned set? Let me show you that really quick. If you scroll up to the top, when we get an event from the provisioning service called Arduino event Wi-Fi STA got IP, this is when your device has received an IP address from a router, which means it is connected to Wi-Fi. That is the spot where we set is provisioned equals true. Okay, and that's it for the code. Now, in since we have the Espressive extension installed, we have everything we need to be able to program this. But before we do, um, I'm just going to plug in, again, I'm just using a dev board here. I'm going to plug that in over USB. And what we need to do is make sure that the right COM port is being used. So this COM3 is not correct. So if I click that, it'll show me all the COM ports. You can look this up in Device Manager, but uh, my device is connected as COM4. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to say, sure, apply it to the BLE provisioning workspace. 
Okay, and so now I'm all set and I wanna make sure that my device is completely erased and that it does not have uh, credentials on it currently. So what I can do is I can hit Control Shift P that launches the command palette. And if I type ESP dash IDF, you'll see I have a whole bunch of IDF helpers here to do anything I need to flash, erase, build my project, uh, just because I have the extension installed. Now, another way to get to this is by the view menu. You can hit view and command palette, either way. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type erase up here and you can see I have ESPIDF erase flash memory from device. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And what it'll do is it's gonna connect and it's gonna completely erase my flash memory so that we're starting fresh. Okay, and now what we will do, now that that is finished, we're gonna bring up the command palette again, and it says build, flash, and start a monitor on your device. So let's do that. That's gonna build our project, flash it to the device, and then start a monitor so we can see the serial output. Now to save time, I did build this ahead of time so we didn't have to wait for the build step, but you'll see the build process down here in the output. And then it asks, how do you wanna flash it? JTAG, UART, or DFU? Well, I'm gonna select UART. And again, I'll pick the workspace. And so now it's connecting over COM4 and you can see it's writing. So we'll go ahead and let that. And while it's doing that, I'm gonna open the Espressif BLE provisioning app. This is available from the Apple Store or Google Play. So Apple or Android, you're covered here. And let's switch our view. Okay. I just realized I need to add, you're not seeing that, so let me fix that really quick. Okay, there's our screen, there's our phone. Oh, and we are getting garbage out of here. That's probably because our baud rate is not set correctly. So let's fix that. So we are programmed, but look at that. We cannot read the output. So how are we going to fix that? Well, I'm gonna first start by hitting Control Shift P. I'm just gonna type baud. That's not what we're looking for. IDF. What we need to do is set, I'm in a device configuration, device port, flash baud rate. Uh, let's come for, let's see. Monitor your device. It's flash method. Oh, it's just the, it's this 115.200, which has given us problems. It's probably expecting a different baud rate. Which we can set in here in our settings.json. IDF dot. Uh, let's see, monitor, monitor baud rate. There we go. And let's change that to 115, oops, 115, 200. Okay, and put a, okay, so that change I just made was in settings.json under the VS Code directory. I will add this to the repository so that, um, we don't have to, so you don't have to make that change. So that's a good catch. So I'll save that. Okay. Close out of that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cancel out of there. And we're gonna start a monitor again. So monitor your device. <clears throat> There we go, much, much better. Okay, so you can see it says provisioning started, waiting for Wi-Fi credentials. So great, our firmware is running as we would expect. 
And now we're going to come over to our app. And you can see, again, this is just the off-the-shelf Espresso app. I'm going to hit Provision Device. Now, it's going to want to look for a QR code. We don't have that feature enabled, so I'm going to say I don't have a QR code. It's the button down at the bottom. And it's going to search. Now, one thing to note, at the very top, it says prefix prov underscore. If you changed the service name in the code here to be something else, you might have to change that prefix. But you can see it found my prov underscore DTF, so I'm going to click on that from the menu. It's going to say connecting to device. And now the proof of possession pin is the default there. You can see is ABCD1234. I did not change that. If you did change it, you would have to uh, enter a different pin in the app. So I'm going to hit next. And now it's going to connect to my device. It's going to come over. It's going to have my device scan for Wi-Fi networks. This is not a scan from your computer. This is a scan from the actual ESP32. I'm going to select my IoT network here and give it the credentials. That's my joke password there, Juicero nod. And I'm going to hit provision. And then if we've done everything correctly, you'll see the output over here. Our device is connecting to Wi-Fi. The app shows that it was sending credentials, confirm those credentials. And now, as you can see in our output, it says connected to Wi-Fi and ready to run main application, which is exactly what we want. I'm going to hit OK here in the app. That just takes us back to the start screen. And that's it. That's all it takes, just a few minutes to build the project. And now you can, like I said, right here, it says connected to Wi-Fi and ready to run main application. You can put whatever your application specific code is in here. And you have a provisioning mechanism that's very simple. Like I said, in my opinion, simpler than the soft AP approach uh, from multiple product experience. I can tell you that that is easier for consumers, especially less technical consumers that are trying to get the device connected to the Wi-Fi network. And so one last thing I would like to show you on this is if I hit reset, so I'm going to hold down the reset, it's going to reboot my ESP32. You'll see that when it boots up, even though it's going to try and start that begin provision again, it will immediately get an IP address and start running the main code. So let's watch that here. You can see it rebooting. And then you will get maybe one, you can see oh, in this case, I don't think we did. Yeah, we've got one waiting for Wi-Fi credentials, open app to get started, but then immediately it connected, got an IP address, and we have connected to Wi-Fi and ready to run main application. So even across reboots, this will remember that you have credentials and it'll immediately get you into that state where it's running your main application, where you can connect to UbiDots or some other, you know, third-party service over the internet because you have a valid connection to the Wi-Fi. And so one thing to note is that if you make changes now to this code, you can reflash it. That's not going to erase the credentials if you just reflash code. Um, that's stored at a separate part in Flash on your ESP32 device. And so uh, you can keep modifying your, your firmware, updating it. It will, it will remain provisioned. If you need to unprovision it or get rid of those, the easiest way to do that is, again, from this... Uh, command palette doing erase flash memory from device that's going to wipe all of the flash memory including your wi-fi credentials that are stored you reflash it with your firmware and you'll be all set in a good clean state so that is it if you have any questions about this please feel free to reach out support at deploythefleet.io or you can leave a comment on this video we are happy to help hopefully this gets you a little bit further on your provisioning journey using BLE instead of the soft AP approach. Thanks again and have a great day.